Hi guys, my name is Lauren. Welcome to my podcast, Dead Air. And today, uh, I feel so cool, one, because we finally have a name for our podcast, which is Dead Air. And two, I have like the coolest lady ever here with me today. You guys are going to love her so much. Her name is Nikki. And Nikki, tell me where you're from, like the company that you're from, because I know you're like all about water cremation, but tell me where you're from. Yes. So um, first of all, thank you. This is so fun. I mean, this we're fun. Like the best we're, day ever. we're fun. Yeah, yeah. This this really is one of the one at least in my top three. Yeah. <laughs> right after sure. like the birth of my two kids, then it's you. It's me and you. Yeah. yeah I it's am awesome. Honored. Uh, yes. So I I work for a company called Resumation America. So um, our parent company is Resumation Limited, and they are based in the UK. They're in Leeds, England. But I am in Minneapolis. And I call on really funeral homes and medical schools throughout United States and Canada. And and try to get them to. And right. Yeah. If they're interested in adding alkaline hydrolysis to their funeral home, or we also have medical schools that use this in their body donation programs for final disposition. So if they're interested in this, I am the gal that they work with. Awesome. Yes. I love this. Yes. So if you haven't picked up yet, the theme for this episode is water cremation. That's what we're going to be talking about. Nikki is the expert. So we had to have my girl here for us to talk and answer her questions or answer your questions that you asked me. And I have some too. But before we get into that, I really wanted to, I I think it's important to note that you're a licensed funeral director. I am a licensed funeral director. Yes. I have been licensed for really more years than I care to admit. (laughs) Um, I can't claim that I'm 29 when I've been licensed for more than 25 years. So we're just going to say a long time. A long yeah, time. been a long, long time, time licensed funeral director. Time. Yes, yes. Okay. So what made you uh, want to become a funeral director? I love to ask people that because usually there's always a good story that accompanies that. I don't, you know, I don't feel like it's very exciting now because you, you're from a family-owned funeral home, right? I mean, mm-hmm. line of funeral directors. Mm-hmm. And I know... Most people assume when you're a funeral director that, of course, it's a family business. And I remember back in mortuary school learning about a third of students actually come from family funeral homes, yeah. which surprises people. So I wanted to be a doctor really my whole life, sports medicine, orthopedic surgeon, something like that. So when I saw, started college at University of Minnesota, that was that's where I thought I was going. And one of my sorority sisters was a child psychology major. And so she took funeral service psychology. And the class was so fascinating. She, she would basically study out loud, right? <laughs> and I would say to her, okay, what else did you learn? Or she'd say, listen to this, listen to this. And I thought, I've got to take this class. So I went and got an override from the advisor for the mortuary science program. And I can still remember walking in there like it was yesterday and saying to her, I have no desire to be a mortician or whatever they're called. Like it gave me the creeps even (laughs) saying the word. But I said, I really want to take this class. She said, great. Um, As long as you're going to be over on this end of campus, why don't you take orientation to funeral service as well? They were both upper level, you know, outside of your major. So you get credit for them. And I thought, okay, great. So the following quarter, I had these two classes and I was hooked. I loved it. Fascinated. I loved it. I looked forward to going to class every day, Mm -hmm. which, you know, when you have classes at 8 a.m. in college, you don't look forward to much. And I remember just... I could hardly wait to go. It was so fascinating. Well, then the more you learn about it and then the more you get to know your colleague or your your classmates and their stories, I just kept thinking, I think I want to do this. I think I want to do this, knowing if it doesn't work out, I can always go to medical school. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So did you get a job at a funeral home then while you were in school? Yes. When you- yes, I did. Yes. So I lived there actually were two apartments above the funeral home so i lived there for free and it was a darling apartment absolutely i mean so cute and so i had free rent and then when i was working i would either you know watch tv do my homework whatever and answer the phone when it rang so easy and then if we had visitations or if there was anything going on then i would just go downstairs and work so it was a great 
great gig if you could get it. Yeah, yep. yeah. Did they help pay for your school? They did not. No. Are they were they supposed to? No, I, oh. I I heard some students when I was in school. Like I loved school. I loved mortuary science school, and like you, I loved asking everybody like where do you work where do you live do you live above a funeral home can yes. I come there can I see it yes <laughs> well and and friends outside of of college were like creeped out I remember thinking like I should have a party they're like no nobody's gonna come nobody wants to come to your party I had a Halloween party above our funeral home as you should because <laughs> that's a good time yeah yeah we, we all came and everybody always wants to know if it's haunted when you live up there Yes. And I do get questions like that, right? Have I ever experienced the paranormal or, you Mm -hmm. know, do I believe in that? And I guess I don't not believe in that, but I, I've never had those, any of those experiences. Have you? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. This is totally off topic, but (laughs) I mean, this could go in a million directions, right? This is a conversation that could go on forever. I I like to think that, um, you know, sometimes they're just passing through, like the buildings aren't haunted. They're just passing through. Right. They're just passing through. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we don't bother them, they don't bother us. Mm -mm. I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So then how did you get started selling water cremation machines? Right. Yeah. Because how, how, did you get how does that happen? How did you get from funeral director to, hey, we want you to sell water alkaline hydrolysis machines to people? Yes. So where, where, I mean, where do I begin, right? I'm like, ooh, because it's not just a quick answer. So backing up, I... When I, when I started my sales career in the um, oh, that's funeral right. industry, mm-hmm. right, I, um, I used to sell caskets. I worked for Batesville Casket Company, and I sold caskets, which another phenomenal job. I absolutely loved it. I loved the company. I loved my customers, my colleagues. It was great. So they're going to be listening right now, and they're going to be like, wait a minute. You, you can sell caskets. You can be a casket salesperson. Yes, right? Who knew that was a job? Yeah, they're, they're totally listening right now. Like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Somebody sells caskets. So, <laughs> Right, because and funeral homes have casket selection rooms. Yeah. Well, a lot of them do. Some of them have moved away from that, but that's a whole different topic. But yeah, so you go to um, funeral homes and you present, present your casket selections, right? You've got your woods and your metals and different colors and these things. So um, I would call on funeral homes throughout Minnesota and Wisconsin and, of course, right, try to get them to show my caskets on their selection room floor. And it was a great job. I absolutely loved it. And then I took a little break from that and was kind of trying to decide, what do I want to do? Do I want to go back and practice as a funeral director? So I still had my funeral director's license. And, excuse me, um, I had worked with, while I was working with selling caskets, one of my customers was adding alkaline hydrolysis to Ah, their funeral home. Yes. And I remember at the time, and I'm going to be perfectly honest, because I I remember at the time when I was learning about this, I I couldn't remember the the words alkaline hydrolysis. He had to keep reminding me what it was called, because it's not a flow, like easy roll off the tongue yeah. term. Mm-hmm. And I'd never heard of it before. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody did this. And I remember thinking, oh my God, he's going to dissolve people in his basement. <laughs> this is, and I, and I say that because that a lot of people, that is their first reaction. Yeah, like they do like, not understand what this is. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking he has lost his mind. This is, this is crazy. Well, then the more I learned about it, what it was, how it works, more of the specifics, I really quickly realized this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense. And I ended up choosing it for my grandpa when he died. So he had pre-planned his funeral with me for flame cremation. But as we learned about this, as a family, we decided this really does make a lot more sense because he loved being up at our cabin, right? You know, Minnesota, Mm -hmm. land of Mm 10,000 lakes, more than that. He was happy there. He loved to swim. He loved the water. And we just thought this, this really is probably the best option. And unfortunately, he had dementia, so it wasn't a conversation we could have with him. But we just knew as a family, like, I think he'd be okay with this. Mm -hmm. So, right, so I chose this for my grandpa. And then fast forward, so when Resumation was looking for a sales manager for the United States, this funeral home recommended me. Oh. So, and it was fun. I remember going to my interview and my now boss saying to me, well, I suppose I should ask you 
I mean, how do you how do you feel about this process? Like, do you believe in it? And I said, well, my grandpa was in one of your machines. And he said, okay, well, that's, we're good with that. Good so answer. You're hired. You're hired. When can you start? <laughs> perfect. You're the perfect person to yes. promote this product. Yes. Because right. The, the, all of it, because you have somebody that you love that passed away and you can tell other people, Hey, we chose this. And this is why, this is why we chose. This. Yes. And I love to tell the story because I can tell them, Hey, as a, as a human being, just a family member, I chose this for my loved one. And I can speak on behalf of being a funeral director, this makes sense. This yes. is a great option. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I love that. Yeah. That's a great way. That's a great story. That's a Thank great you. way to start the podcast. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> I was curious myself, like, I know we had talked about a little bit, but uh, to get the full story that like it comes full circle. Yeah. It comes full circle. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, you really are like, okay, look at how everything just, right? Yeah. Uh, another thing that I really love. So you are on TikTok. I am. And um, I, when I found your videos, I love how you are so educational and you are just really trying to spread the word about alkaline hydrolysis. And I also noticed you like to go state to state and like help promote this and help get the word out because I feel like there's so much misinformation that's out there about alkaline hydrolysis, water cremation, and it's kind of a challenge to get it passed, approved, you have to get approval yep. for yep. each individual state. Yes. It's not like just a national thing like, yay, it, or yep. nay. It's every single state has yes. to approve water cremation or deny it. And um, we were just having lunch and she was telling me a little bit about some of the issues that they're having with the states. And I really wanted to talk about that because I find it really interesting. Um, you're having difficulties with Texas. Yes. Getting it passed down in Texas. Yes. So one quick thing. So I, the way I explain it to people, because I get asked a lot, especially through social media, right? Mm -hmm. They'll learn about it. And mm -hmm. then, which I guess backing up just a little bit, that was the whole reason I started the TikTok is I, and so I, I almost like got frustrated that not enough people know about it, right? Yeah. Like there isn't enough education. Yeah. There's funeral directors that don't talk about it. And I mean, it's, it's hard to educate, like, you know, I went to school, I went to mortuary school and we got to tour a facility and I, <laughs> until this last couple of days, I, I couldn't tell you anything about water cremation. Right. You knew it existed. I knew it existed. Which is more than, right? Yeah. <laughs> so many other don't. people. And I, and I have found through experience. So if you're, you know, if you're sitting next to someone at your kid's sporting event or someone on the plane or you're at a party or whatever it is, and someone says, well, what do you do when you start talking about alkaline hydrolysis? Oh, I've never heard of it. And then when you explain what it is, I'm not, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time the people will say, oh, I want that. Why wouldn't everybody want that? And I say, right, right. It's because not everybody can have that. They don't know it exists. It's not offered everywhere. So I thought, okay, apparently TikTok is the way to yes. get the word out. Yep. So my whole reason for starting TikTok was to educate people about alkaline hydrolysis, water cremation. And I truly don't care if people choose it or not. I want people to choose what's best for them. But they need to know it's an option, yes. if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You need to have all of your options. I feel like as funeral professionals, that's our job. So one thing that I explain to people is that it's not illegal in your state. It just hasn't been made legal, okay. if that makes sense, yep. right? Yep. So the the legislation, the, the verbiage has to be changed, allowing for it. Okay. So in every state, as you know, right, every state... Cremation, flame cremation is legal. Yep. So they actually have to go in and change the wording, and it has to be improved um, through the whole political process, which is so much more complicated than I It sounds I like a ever, lot of work already. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And I have a friend who um, actually works in Texas, and this is kind of her job. And she, had, he, she has said to me that it is that thousands of bills get presented every legislative session. And she said, it is really, really, really hard to get a bill passed, and it is really easy to get one shut down. Wow. Because really, it takes one strong voice or someone to say, no, I'm against this. Yep. And that's kind of all, all it takes. And that's all it takes. Yeah. That easy. Yes. So you bring up Texas, 
And I have met people just through traveling and other Texans, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Funeral directors in Texas who have approached me and, you know, it's not legal here yet. We've tried. And, you know, how can you help? And so I have kind of put out a call to action to any followers on TikTok who were Texans to try to sign this petition through change.org, call your legislators, tell your funeral homes that you want this, because I feel like it's the public that's going to drive this, right? Like the public has to want it, kind of demand it. Yeah, because they're not just going to change it out of the blue. Nobody's just going to change it. And really... There are there are funeral directors that really aren't for this. Um, they're not necessarily against it, but maybe maybe they don't want it. But they don't necessarily want anybody else to have it either. I I, I mean it's a it's a yeah. tricky it's sticky right yeah. it's it's just not a it's not an easy topic. And funeral directors, and I will say this because I am one, are very slow to change, right? Mm -hmm. It took 100 years for cremation to get where it is now. And now it's commonplace, right? Yep. Well over 50% of -hmm. people choose flame cremation. But back in the day, funeral directors did not want this. No. Right? They didn't talk about it. You never would advertise it. You wouldn't put it on your sign. It was shameful. So I feel like it's a little bit that way. Um, and I don't know if it's to protect their flame crematories or I, I don't I don't know exactly. But in in Texas specifically, I have been told that there is strong opposition by the Catholic Church. So it's the Catholics that don't. Is that the like the only like pickup is the Catholics? So that is what I've been told, right? Okay. So okay. my perception, what I have been told by people in Texas who are working to pass this, that, um, and, it, and it's not a secret, that there have been releases through from, you know, bishops and other groups within the Catholic Church that have said that their, their, for, their, their stance on it is that it is not a respectful way to treat the human body and it has to do with the water so there's this perception that we're flushing grandma down the drain right Mm. that that's what we're doing Mm -hmm. and and it doesn't seem like we can educate people enough to really get them to look at the science of this right the the chemistry of what this is and i mean you and I both know with flame cremation, you are ultimately setting this body on fire. Yep. Which I would say, maybe not a respectful way to treat the human body. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, the Catholics were against cremation. Very I much mean, so. Even in the 90s, it was like this, they were just kind of coming to terms with, okay, fine. But we want it all to stay together. Yes. You have to bury Very the specific. Yes. And they, it, right? Yes. Very yes. specific You can't keep them at home. You can't scatter. Yep. You can't divide. Yep. I mean, I, I, I've i even, like within the last few years, I've still had priests that won't do the service if we're not going to the cemetery to bury them. Yes. They'll be like, nope, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I can't do that. And I'm like, really? It's, it's 2020. 20, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Whatever right. year it is. It's 2023. What, what year is it? Yes. You, you won't. Uh, I mean, I even had a priest get mad at me when we had, um, I had a lady. This is totally off topic. I'm so sorry, but just really quick. I, I had do a lady. love off topic. I, I know we do. I had a lady. Uh, her husband died uh, in the 90s, and then she recently died. And he was buried in the Catholic section of the cemetery. And after her husband died, she got mad at God. She felt alone. And it, it didn't really come full circle where she was going to church again until closer to the end of her life. But she switched to Lutheran. But mm. her husband was buried in the Catholic section of the cemetery. So when I called the priest to tell him that we were going to be doing a burial, but he wasn't going to be the one to do the prayers, he oh, told me boy. I couldn't, he told me I couldn't do it. And I'm like, sir, or um, father, father, yes, father. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, father, uh, her husband's already buried there. You're going to have me go to the family and tell them no. And he said, well, it's not really my problem. And I said, okay, so um, this is going to become your problem really quickly. This is going to be somebody's <laughs> because problem. Because now this is my problem. Yeah. So it's going to be our problem together, Father. So do you want to be there? Yes, I do. Okay. So if I have you there to 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 give a little prayer or a blessing, you'll be okay with that. 
Yep. So then I have to call and negotiate, like tell the family, hey, we have to have father there too. So where this is going is that the Catholic Church is very vocal about things, and they have been for very many years. Yep. And so cremation was, uh, you know, we had to get the Catholic Church to be comfortable with it. Yep. And yep. and now they are. And now we're introducing something new, yes. which is water cremation. Yes. And you're having some hurdles with and that. They're, and they're saying no. So within the state of Texas, what I was told by someone who works with this group of bishops, and forgive me, I cannot remember the, the, the formal name of this group, but she said that 35% of Texas is Catholic. Oh, that's okay. interesting. So I don't know if that's a true number or not, but we're going to use that. We're right? using it right now. We're, mm-hmm. For this for this purpose, it is 35%. Today it's 35%. Today it is. Today it is. Um, and I said, okay. I mean, I'm saying this like in my own head or out loud, not to this woman. But when I was told this, I thought, okay, so 35% of Texas is Catholic. But that means that the other 65% can't have this either because the Catholics don't believe that this is respectful. How is that? So we're going to take the decision away from 65%, the majority, because 35% doesn't like it. Yes. I don't like that because... I don't like it either. I I feel like people should know what their options are. Mm -hmm. They should be able to pick which one is best for them. Even if they don't like water cremation, great, don't choose it. Exactly. You can do the normal, the the flame one that you're so used to to doing if you don't like that. Yes. That's a real bummer for Texas because I feel like you're so close to getting it passed and then it just... They yeah. they come and they're like, nope, we don't like it. We don't we don't like it. Yeah. And it just it gets shut And down. the bill never makes it very far because of these things. Mm. And um So do they do they like do they show up and then speak out against it? Like, hi, I am the father of this church and I don't like it. How does so, that go? So you know, it's okay, that is a great question and I think we'd have to kind of Oh, would that be a whole nother episode? I think that'd be a whole other episode. Darn it. Okay. Yeah. I we, think we can cut that. Yeah. No, we're not cutting it. It's Let's do another episode. Okay, yeah. okay, we'll do another we're, one. <laughs> we're coming. We're coming back to that um, because it's not the only state. So now, again, allegedly, allegedly, this is, a, this is a word we use a lot in this little game. Allegedly, Wisconsin had the same issue. So yeah, I was going to ask you about yes. Wisconsin. So we're here- Wisconsin also did not pass this past legislative uh, legislative session. That's a really hard word. Same reason. Um, and I was told, again, Catholics. Allegedly by the same person. Allegedly. Who, yeah, uh, different people. Wisco- uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin? Wisconsin? I don't know what they are. A Texan <laughs> told me one, and yeah. So. Oh, that's a bummer. But then if you if you look into it, you will read, right, that they very much, nope, it's not okay. So it's interesting because now the Catholic Church will allow you to scatter remains. Yeah, that's So that new, has changed. Yep, that's a new development now. Um, now they are okay with the scattering. Um, so it's almost like the Catholic Church, we kind of have to ease them into yes. these new baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And then it it, it kind of gets better as we go along over the years where they're a little bit more accepting of um, that's super interesting. Yeah, I don't know why that's so interesting to me, but it is. Well, it it's interesting. And again, this is probably a whole other pon- podcast, right? It's just it's interesting the power of the Catholic Church in yes. certain places now. I have zero disrespect for the Catholic Church as far as, you know, those who are Catholics and what Mm -hmm. they believe. I just don't, I don't like when it affects non-Catholics, if if that makes Mm -hmm. sense, right? Mm -hmm. I am not Catholic and I like my, I want my choices and I want my beliefs and. And and I can sit here and say that my mom's side of the family is all Catholic um, and and I went to Catholic school and I was raised Catholic. And even as a um, previous very you know devout Catholic person, yeah. Yeah. I, I still feel like there should be separation and people should have the choice of if they want this or if they want the other. Yes, yes. So that's that's where it becomes really frustrating for me, because um, like I said, the whole my whole feeling on alkaline hydrolysis is is. It doesn't matter. I don't care if 98% of the world does not want this. I just need them to all know it's an option. To know know what it is. You can have this if you want. Well, and so I have had people comment, right, even within my social media following and saying, well, I'm a Catholic and I'm choosing this, right? And I'm thinking, (laughs) well, not in Texas, you're not. But 
it is, but it just goes to show, right? Like this, the, these people are like, well, this is my belief, but this is, this is also still what I want. Yep. So, yep. I don't, I mean, there's no easy answer. Just going to take time. But again, it, I think a lot of this is going to come from the public, public demand. So that's why I think it's so important that you're here with me today because we're here, we're normalizing this, we're talking about it and we will, I do have questions to get to with you. Um, but there was one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, oh, so I was wondering, can you tell us what states this is legal in? It is currently legal in 28 states. 28? Okay, that's actually more than I thought you were going to yes. say. Yes, yes. Now, here's what's interesting. 28 states have legalized this. However, only 15 actually have providers, oh. meaning only 15 of those 28 states have a funeral home with a system that is offering it. Now, some states have more than one, some just have one. And so again, one of the things that I'm hearing from funeral directors that I talk to is, well, nobody's asking for it. Mm -hmm. So why, why am I going to install a system if nobody's asking for it? And this is where I say, if you build it, they will come. They will come. Yeah. Now, as I get to be Speaking with younger funeral directors, they don't understand what that means. So we're going to really? have to start replaying that movie. Yeah, oh not everybody goodness. understands that. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Not everybody got that. Everybody, right? I mean, because if, if you, you know, it, you know. If you build it, they will come. It's an amazing movie, Field of Dreams. But it's true. And so those funeral homes, those early adopters, the people that we are working with who are offering this, they are coming. Yeah, you said something. People want this. Yeah, that they will drive by other funeral homes. Yes. Because, I mean, they will drive to, yes. I mean, if there's only one in the state and that's what they want, they will drive. Yeah. So you think about it, right? They may drive 60 miles and think of the number of funeral homes between where they live, right? So yep. they're not they're not going to their small town or their hometown funeral director. They're going to drive 60 miles to the person that, to the company that offers this. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... 28 states, but only 12, did you say? 15. Only 15 have. That's really interesting. Yeah. So I think for people listening who want this, it's a matter of, is this legal in your state? And then if it is and there's no providers, you need to start letting your funeral directors know yeah. that you want this. Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of the opinion, mm -hmm. is that nobody's asking for it. To which I say, it's because nobody knows about it. Nobody. Which is why we're educating people. And talking about it. Right. So we just don't have enough conversation. No. No. Okay. But I would imagine dinner conversations with you, because I know it is with me, really often revolve around this topic. Yes. All the time. Who wants to talk about death? <laughs> Pass the cheese it's and potatoes. Just, it's just a normal conversation. It is a normal, and we need to normalize it, right? We have got to normalize talking about death. It's so important. Okay, so I want to ask you, like, coming back, um, one of the most popular questions I got on Facebook is, what is water cremation? So are you able to just really briefly, um, really quick, like, just a little rundown yes. of what water yes. cremation is? Yes, yes. Okay, so here's the way I describe it to people. Well, because first of all, when they're like, wait, water and cremate, it isn't cremation, use fire, With doesn't flame. water mm -hmm. put out fire? I mean, like they can't. It doesn't like, make sense. Right? Make it make sense. I can't wrap my head around this. So the way I explain it to people is if you were to dig a hole just in the ground, in the dirt, and place a body in it and cover it up, the way it would naturally decompose over time using, you know, water, bacteria in the soil, et cetera, it would take, I mean, years, depending on, you know, temperature, soil conditions, but that process is alkaline hydrolysis, that breakdown. So what we have done, and by we, I mean people smarter than me, right? The biochemists that have, that have developed this, they have mimicked that um, process using 95% water and 5% 5 potassium hydroxide, which a lot of people will know as lye. And when you when you put those together under pressure and you know with the with the hot water, it it speeds it up to about four hours. Wow. So it really is that's why it makes so much sense to me too, right? I mean, this is natural decomposition, just sped up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sped up in four hours. And yes. Then. So when people say, "Oh, I just you know put me in a ground, put me in the ground, and you know just 
decompose or whatever. That that's what this is. It's just sped up. Just sped up. Yep. All in one chamber with water. Yes. Yes. Ninety five percent water, five percent potassium hydroxide. Which I think is important too to let people know that this is not an acid. This often brings apart brings upon visions of breaking bad. Aha. Uh-huh. In the bathtub and the fifty five gallon drums. And that mm, is not that's not what not, we're doing here. This is not what we're doing. No. Yeah, let's we are not talk doing about this. um I people want to know how this is more green. Fair. They want to absolutely like, well, it how? Is. Yes. Yes. So when you look at traditional burial and flame cremation, which I think is often the easiest to to compare it to because it's, you know, both ways are reducing the body to yep. mm-hmm. just bones. Um, flame cremation uses a substantial amount of natural gas. That's not talked about enough, by the way. That's very true. The substantial amount of yep. natural gas. They don't that's talk used. about that. Yeah, yeah, a lot. And so I have read different studies, different reports that will equate flame cremation, like the amount of natural gas and the carbon dioxide output, they will equate that to a 600 to a thousand mile car trip. Wow. For- and that's a lot. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. So with alkaline hydrolysis, water cremation, there are, it, it, is, it uses 90% less energy and the carbon footprint is 75% less wow. than flame cremation. Wow. Right? So it is, I mean, it's significantly better. So it's better for the environment. And, you have people and, there's, no, and there's no harmful emissions, right? So we don't have that. I mean, in addition to the carbon dioxide, we don't have the harmful emissions from like the mercury in the, you know, the dental amalgam being released into the air. There's nothing harmful being released from this. Yeah, because when we cremate people and they have those mercury fillings in their teeth. Which they do. Which they do. uh, That gets released out. And the crematory, the retorts, they do have filters, but they can really only filter out so much. Right, right. And when you talk to people that are, you know, the cremation retort experts, they they do try to sell you on the fact that nothing gets out of the stack, that nothing is able to penetrate the atmosphere. But really the truth is, is that some, some amount actually really does. Absolutely. As, as much as we can abide by what the rules are and and what, what is allowed, there is a certain amount that is allowed to come out of that stack. Uh, again, I think this is the third time I've said this, but we just don't talk enough about this. Uh, so this just keeps everything all together contained in water with, would you call it, a, it's a chemical, the the lye, the potassium? Yeah, the potassium hydroxide, it is. I mean, it's a chemical, but I, I, I feel like the most important is to make sure that people understand that this is not an acid. I often say, think not back to chemistry. Think back to chemistry, right? Your pH scale. Um Acid is a one, so that's vinegar. Yep. Water is a seven, and potassium hydroxide is a 14. So it's a base. It is the complete opposite of acid. And potassium hydroxide is used um, in a lot of the things that we use every day. Our soaps, our lotions, our makeup. It can be used as a food preservative. So it's not an uncommon or toxic chemical. Yep. Um, another question I had on Facebook was, uh, <laughs> uh, to put it bluntly, are we flushing grandma down into the sewer systems? Oh, all, all day long. All the time. All, all the time. All the comments. It's, are, it's common. And it's sad, too, because I also hear this from funeral directors, and I think you clearly don't understand how don't this understand. process works, right? And So we're going to debunk that right now. Yes. That's a lie. That's a lie. That is a big fat lie. I should have a beeper. I know, right? Like, <laughs> that's false. <laughs> lie. Yes, yes. I'm getting one. We're not investing. True. Yep. Next episode, we're going to have a buzzer. We're going to have a beeper. <laughs> Lies. And, and then we're going to. False news. Yes, right? Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Yes. So it is, it, and again, right, it, it goes back to the chemistry and understanding the chemistry of how this all works. But when you, um, when when this body when the body is broken down, what you have left in this water are the basic building blocks of a human being. So it's amino acids, peptides, um, sugar, and soap. And so that's oh. that's what's going down the drain. It's 
this effluent, as what we call the water, the, the technical term is effluent, has been tested and tested and retested and tested again by, I mean, major universities and um, outside companies, right? Every every facility that wants to offer alkaline hydrolysis, they have to apply for a wastewater permit, a discharge mm-hmm. permit, right? So they're not just washing this down the drain and going about their business. They have to get the okay. They have to have a permit and allowed to put this down. So we have to supply all of the test results of what actually is in this um, effluent before they can say like, yep, okay, it's safe to go down to drain. And some have even said that this soap is actually good for the sewer system because it kind of cleans it out as it goes through. Oh, that's so cool. Because it's soap. That's actually really cool. Right? Yep, because it's mostly soap because it's lye. Yes. yes. And it yes. just dissolves everything in that chamber. And one thing that was super cool that you said, we went on a tour that will be posted of the alkaline hydrolysis facility that we were able to see today. And I love the part where you said about the DNA. Yes, zero. There's zero DNA. Absolutely zero. Yes, it is 100% sterile and absolutely zero DNA. And then it's flushed. So it really absolutely cannot be grandma down the drain. So I should probably shouldn't use the word flushed. And then it, because there is no flushing, it just gets drained into the drain. Yes, yes. Um, And what I was telling Nikki was, what's, what's so interesting about that is people get so hung up on that. But if you think about the fact that there is no DNA, so you couldn't, it is dissolved out enough that there's, you can't identify the person from that liquid. Versus when we are embalming people and we are preparing them for a funeral, we are draining their blood. And that is going right down into the sewer systems too. Guess what's going down there? Your DNA. Yes. If you go to the bathroom, <laughs> you go number one, you go number two, guess what's going down the oh, toilet? absolutely. Your right? DNA. I mean, we talk about like, okay, right, when you're done taking a, a bath. Look, mm-hmm. go, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot way more, more gross things going being down the flushed drain. down our toilets and versus that solution. Homes. Yes. From your machine is actually fully, it's balanced. It's yeah. it's neutral. There is no DNA. There's nothing nothing harmful that is then going down into the drain. Correct. And everything that is left over in there is the bones. That's another question that they have. Yes. Is what's left over? Yeah. Because to be like, well, do you get anything yeah. back? Yeah. Yeah. What? Right. Do, like, do I get do I get ashes back? That was another question on Facebook right. that they really wanted to yes. know. Yes. So. Um, as you were able to see on the tour today, so when you when the when the process is over, when you pull the tray out, you essentially have the skeletal not I me mean, not even essentially you have the skeletal remains. It was so cool, like right? Every single bone, it, even the finger, and it's digits. kind of in place, right? Like it makes you realize how gentle this process is yeah. because yep. um, the body is always placed in head first into the machine. And when you pull them out, you're like, okay, uh, cranium, right? Here's, yep. I mean, the, ribs the fingers, the ribs, place. right? Yep. You were like, is this a rib? I mean, the the femurs are right, right in place. And so, but everything is sterile. So um, UCLA did a a study on this, and I found this fascinating, that this, the, the machine, because it's essentially a, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the word right now. That's okay, they'll cut it out. Okay, hang on, give me a second. Um, UCLA did a study. What's the, what's the machine that they sterilize inter- instruments in? Surgical instruments. What's it called? An autoclave. Ah. Jeez. I got that right. test question wrong. Put that together however you will. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Start. Yeah, start right. again. Okay, so UCLA did a study, right? So this machine is essentially a giant autoclave, right? And so an autoclave is used to sterilize surgical instruments. So the what's coming out of this machine is 60,000 times more sterile than surgical instruments. Wow. That's a huge number, That's right? That's huge. Six times more would be impressive. So there is nothing wrong with what's coming out of there. Wow. It is not harmful. It's not dangerous. Do you ever just want to like scream this from the mountaintops because people constantly are telling you what they think you're yes. It is, yes. and and they're wrong. I would be so upset. It, you know, I mean, because it's hard to not take it personally. Yes. 
I mean, obviously I'm passionate about this. And I think when when anybody's an expert in their own field, I think everybody gets frustrated really by passionate. misinformation, right? Yeah. And it, it it does. And I just think like, oh my gosh, it just, like you, you don't even know the truth about this. Like, why are you you don't want it and you're you I mean the the comments we see some some crazy comments there's some crazy comments we can we can discuss the crazy comments yeah. but I mean I understand there's some humor in it but also it it is frustrating because people really don't understand just how clean this process is how clean and all of the science that has really gone into it. I, I, I'm still blown away when I first laid eyes on the machine and all the mechanicals and the pressures and the valves and the step one, step two, step three. And it was so clean and so beautiful. I mean, right. really, it really is. What, yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. And I just it opened my eyes. I, I like. I wanted everybody to see it. So that I know. I really wanted to have yes. the video. So we. I, I want to be able to do that too. And unfortunately, right. So I've got some photos that I have been, you know, given permission to use. Um, but I am just kind of waiting for the day, right, for a family to say, "Hey, why don't you just use right? Yeah. Show me going in. Show me coming out. Um, show the world what this looks like." Because I feel like seeing is believing, and it's really impressive. Well, if I like tip over tomorrow, you have permission to use my body please, and please my bones. <laughs> please, that is. Well, if I did, that is not how I want to prove my point, Lauren. <laughs> but thank you, your kindness is Wait, amazing. One day we're hoping that there what is some family that will come forward and say, "Hey, we really want." I'm actually surprised nobody's done it yet that hasn't come forward and been like, "Hey, I mean, you do have some pictures of bones, right? That yes. you have like after they're done from the yes. process. Yes, you have some, but it would be so interesting if there was a documentary and in you." We were able to, like on YouTube, I could go to YouTube and watch an embalming. I could go to YouTube and watch a cremation. So and somebody somebody gave permission so you, to show that. So, you, well, I, so I think this is what it comes down to, too, is mm -hmm. I would have to, you know, in arrangements, say to a family, oh, by the way. <laughs> by the way, would you mind? Side note, would it be okay? And it just, it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, I have yet to that, have the situation where I feel like this is the right family to ask for permission, right? You just <laughs> how would you even how would you even yeah. like yeah, that would How be do a you tough feel one. about death education? How do you, that would be a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should so, I go into some more questions that we Yes, have? please. Yeah. I love people's okay. questions. Okay, let me let me pull up a couple. Let's pick three questions here from Facebook that people really wanted to know. Okay. I, I truly believe that we could make this a series. We really I mean there's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. I'm so glad like that we were even able in one podcast episode to really try to like get as much information in. But even in almost 45 minutes, we could go another 45 minutes. Yes, easily. Easily. Yes. Is water cremation less expensive than Oh, that's flame a great cremation? question. Yes. We I hear that question all the time. So the the short answer is that's gonna depend on the funeral home that is offering it, right? Mm -hmm. Um they they set the price just like anything else, right? They set the price. So yep. some funeral homes will offer it at the exact same price. So if a family chooses cremation, they will essentially say flame or water. Same price. Same price. Um, some, and I feel like more often than not, it is going to be a little bit more expensive. Now, I don't think it's a huge amount. Maybe it's four or $500. Um, maybe it's $1,000. But the truth of it is the equipment is more expensive, mm -hmm. right? So to to add this equipment to your funeral home is going to be more expensive than adding a flame crematory. So it is, I think it's a justifiable cost that it's going to be more expensive. Now, whether or not it's worth it, that's that's not my decision to make, right? For me, yes. I often tell people too that um, I kind of compare it to an only because I feel like this makes sense, but it's like you look at organic strawberries, right? To look at them, they're both in the clamshell, they're both red, they're both clearly strawberries. One is organic and one isn't. The organic's gonna be more expensive than the non-organic. Some people think it's worth it and others do not. And so I don't know if that's a crude example or not, but I think it helps to make sense, right? Like people are gonna pay more for what they see value in. Absolutely. So. Um, 
I I had one of my followers on TikTok actually share with me. I believe she was from Ontario, and she had planned. Um, she had unfortunately, I think both her mother and father had died fairly close to one another. She chose this for both of her parents, and it was less expensive than flame cremation. Wow! So again, just depends I, where you're located. Yeah, I would probably. say general answer. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty close. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think I know the answer to this, but I, I still think it's a really good one. <laughs> Do you take people's valuables off of them or can you water cremate them with their valuables? I've seen a video of people's stuff that never went with them. How do you know if they go with them? That's quite a few questions all in no, one. No, but I but I, I can narrow it down. So here's one thing that's you know, that's specific only to water cremation. So with flame cremation as you know, Lauren, family members will add letters, stuffed animals, flowers, whatever they want, right? Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll put it into the cardboard box or the casket or whatever. With alkaline hydrolysis, none of that can go in because it won't break down. Ah. So the only materials that can go in are um, animal-based proteins. So wool, silk, leather. So if, if a body is placed in the vessel in jeans and a t-shirt, that jeans and t-shirt will remain. Oh. So that's a weird thing to wrap your head around, right? Yeah. So so we can't. So we can't put in notes and stuffed animals and those kind of things. They, but a leather they jacket will? Well. Because <laughs> I can't cremate leather right, jackets. Right, you're like, huh, I don't know how to do that. So the the metal on the leather jacket, I mean, it has to be pretty specific, pretty right? Pretty specific. So, so I have a funeral home that that uses silk shrouds. So if the family wants to witness and they want to have a private viewing, that they use this silk shroud. And I mean, it has to be 100% silk. The thread has to be 100% silk, right? There was a lot that went into um, kind of developing these shrouds yeah. and trying different materials. Mm-hmm. Or you'd be like, okay, that's obviously not 100% silk because yeah. that didn't break down all the way. So... Um, so, yeah, so uh, just a leather jacket, no. I mean, there's going to be thread, there's going to be zippers and all those kind of things, right? And to this day, I've never put leather into the machine. But, again, I trust the scientists who yes. developed this to tell me that leather will, in fact, break down. So if someone tells you that these things will be placed in there with their loved one, they will not. Now, okay. if there were for some, if there was a wedding ring or a bracelet or one of those things... It would still remain. So, they, so they could, we would find it on the tray. We'd find it on the tray. Yep. And so that wedding ring could, I mean, if they really wanted it to stay on their loved one, it would it would be there afterwards and we could put it in the urn afterwards. But so that is different. So that's a great question. That's, yeah. Yep. Does the water just basically obliterate the tissues and muscles and such? Do the organs go in too? Or how are they disposed of in the situation? I think we technically answered this. We did. But. But we can address it because, again, people can't quite wrap their heads around what happens, Mm -hmm. right? So, again, all of the soft tissue is broken down. So everything, skin, tendons, organs, everything on us except our bones is broken down, dissolved, essentially. In hot water because it heats it up. Yep, yep. Yep. So the water gets to 302 degrees, but because it's under pressure, it never boils. Oh, that's which cool. again, right? So you'll you'll probably see a lot of comments like, "Oh, you're boiling our loved ones." So technically, nope, it does not boil because of that pressure. So it's the heat, the pressure, the lie, the water, and then there's a gentle movement that just breaks it down breaks in a matter of hours. Yep. Oh. I love that. It's like just a little, like a little bath. A yeah, little, right. A little, uh, <laughs> like when you go to the, get your pedicure and you put your feet in, little jets move around. Okay, now I'm. That's <laughs> what I'm going to picture. That then my all my that's little, all going to come. That that's going to be left on my toes. <laughs> a little spa day. <laughs> all right, one more. One, okay, more. one more. I said three, but I, I'm I'm going to add a bonus question here because it's so fun. It is. That... It's so interesting. I, like again, I could talk to you about this all day. Okay, let's. <laughs> I, I'm going to ask this one just because it, it, it goes with the theme, and I think it helps debunk this. Is there a sludge that is left over that then goes down the drain? Oh. When that water, when it turns off and it's all done, what does the water look like? Is it sludgy? 
what a question to end on. No, but you know what? <laughs> I, I'm so glad you did because this is, I have read in what's supposed to be these, you know, well-written scientific articles, or it's really more of an opinion piece of somebody who clearly doesn't know what this is, because I've heard, I've read it, and I've heard of the water being referred to as a soupy mess or a sludge. A lot of people say soup. They're like, what? Oh, yeah, it's a whole thing. Human soup <laughs> yeah, or bone soup. broth, right? Yep. I've heard the, oh, this gives a whole new meaning to bone broth. And while I do have to giggle, because I have a good person a sense yeah. of humor, right? Because you have, have to. to. You, but have, to. I, you <laughs> have to. But at the same time, I'm like, no, this is not bone broth. Clever, but it is not. And it's not It's not sludge at all. It is a liquid. It is a, a clear liquid. It looks similar to like a dark tea, or I will say bourbon, depending okay. on your audience. Mm-hmm. Who do you, do you want to describe it as a tea or a bourbon? Some people are like, yeah, let's call it bourbon. Let's call it bourbon. So yeah, so it is not, nope, it's not sludgy. It's not And it's thick, soapy. It's not, yeah, and it's sudsy. And sudsy. Yeah. And then it goes down the down drain. Down the drain. And it goes to a water treatment facility. Yes, I people think that's think, important to People note. think that you flush your toilet and then it comes out your kitchen sink. They like, do. And I see a lot of like, oh, yep, it's going down the drain and then coming back in our drinking water. Okay, that is not that's how this works. That's not true. Right? It goes to a water treatment facility. <laughs> right. Where's our buzzer? False news. False. <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> Actually, I just call that lies. Those are lies. 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 Um, and it... So it goes to a water treatment facility where it's like treated and then treated and treated again, but ends up non-potable water, right? So this is not going back into our drinking water. It's used for other things, but you will have people that will argue with that, argue with you about that all day. What's the other things it's used for? Oh, well, they'll tell you that it's used on our crops and then it's fed back to us. I saw the oh, there's so many theory. conspiracy. Oh, there's so many conspiracy but theories. But that's not true. Absolutely not. Okay, you there heard it are. Here. You so heard here's it here. the thing: is it does it is it a great fertilizer? Absolutely, because it's high in nutrients. Look, look what it's in. Right, there is a provider in Colorado that has partnered with a, um, uh, like a tea or excuse me, a tree and flower farm, and I think they call it tree tea. I always want to call it tea tree, but tree tea. And so it's like they've partnered, right? So they take this and use it for flowers and trees. This is ah. not going on our crops in the food that we eat. Mm-hmm. Right? That's so good to know. Yeah. could it be used? Um, I have heard of, so this is alkaline hydrolysis is really common for animals and that's how it started. So I, I've heard of some, like anim- some places that will take the the effluent from animals, and they will use that for, um, like, cemeteries and other... But, again, this is not going on our food sources. It is absolutely not going on our food. You heard it here. Yes. This is the truth. I will not tell you lies. (laughs) There's no fake news here. There's no fake news here. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you for having me so much. I I think that we can talk about death, and it can be a lighthearted conversation. And I just love you so much because, we. I mean, it's so – you're so – awesome to talk to and easy to talk to and death shouldn't be scary and talking about water cremation it's it's kind of taboo like not enough people are talking about it so Tef somebody I I totally see why you got hired for your job by the way because you're just so friendly and it's been such a pleasure to get to know you and we're definitely gonna have to have you back so we can ask you more water cremation questions okay I mean I I think we could come up with really a year's worth of I bet we could Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so Well, thank you so much. Help us take the show on the road. (laughs) Dead air. Dead air. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in on Dead Air. I want to thank Nikki so much for being here. And you can follow her on TikTok. What's your username on TikTok? And we'll we'll put it here on the screen. But why don't you tell them your socials and stuff that you're on? Okay. So um, really all of this information you can find on TikTok. And my handle is Nick Mick, N-I-C-M-I-K underscore resumation. Perfect. And I am on TikTok as well, Lauren the Mortician, um, but we are here on Dead Air talking about and normalizing death. And I thank you for being here. Thank Nikki for being here and we will see you next week.